Like many people who started their data career around 2012, I was definitely hit by the HBR article about data science being the sexiest job of the 21st century. But yet here I am near a decade later, not doing data science, at least not as directly as I used to. Um, so I want to talk about why I left um, data science and why I started pushing more towards data engineering early on in my career. And in order to do that, let's go back a bit and talk about my experience in college and the courses I was taking and how that kind of pushed me towards data science first. So going back to uh, my college experience, uh, I first started interacting a lot more with data, at least applied data in an epidemiology course. And for those of you who haven't taken an epidemiology course, it's basically a branch of medicine that focuses on all of the math and statistics around the transfer, control, and management of disease. So you learn things like incidence, um, distribution, and things of that nature. So it's how you, since you can mathematically plot how disease is transferred um, and how you can actually plot and manage it. One of the examples you go through is uh, that of Jon Snow. Nope, not that Jon Snow. No, this Jon Snow knew a few things. And one of the things that he kind of discovered through his research was that cholera or a recent cholera outbreak that was hitting um, the city wasn't caused by, at that point, what they thought was bad air, but by bad water. Um, he used different data points, including kind of where people were getting sick. So where in the city they were getting sick as well as the fact that like the beer brewers weren't getting sick and different people weren't getting sick. And so kind of use this analysis to figure out that, oh, it's the water that's making us sick. And so that along with the computer science course that I was taking at the time, pushed me to want to use basically computer science and statistics together, um, specifically towards healthcare. And that's really what I was trying to figure out. Um, after that, I took some like courses in bioinformatics and a couple other spaces, just because I was like, I want to know more about how I can apply, you know, basically programming and, and math towards, uh, you know, healthcare. And eventually I came across the HBR article and that's what pushed me towards data science. So the first job I got was at a hospital, well, more specifically a hospital network. And so I was really pushing hard uh, at that company to work as a data scientist. Uh, at the time when I was hired, I was an analyst and I kind of pushed to be involved in some of the data science projects. Uh, we worked on things like readmission. So that was a really common project to work on. Um, it might still be, but especially back then, I think that was one of the first places that was kind of people trying to apply the idea of data science um, towards, you know, healthcare problems. So can we detect why people are having readmission problems? Readmission just means, you know, our patients being readmitted to the hospital after attending it, you know, 30 to 60 days after. And we were using different socioeconomic data to try to detect uh, whether or not, you know, there were different factors that were maybe outside of the hospital um, to figure out, you know, how can we make sure that every patient is taken care of. And I kind of didn't have the greatest experience there because honestly, the data scientists that were also hired were kind of new to the field as well. And well, no one really knew how to drive a project forward. And that kind of gave me a bad taste in my mouth. So when I went to my next company, which was also a healthcare company, in this case, a healthcare analytics company, I saw how you could possibly use data science or you know basic stats to actually drive value and build a product. And I think this is what really started pushing me towards the data engineering route, right? So in this company, um, we were really focused on things like fraud detection, general healthcare, like, you know, how healthy are populations, uh, as well as detecting things like opioid uh, overprescription. This was all really interesting things that we didn't just do like research on, but we built solid products around. And this was kind of the next domino to fall. The first being, again, working for companies Many times they don't even know how they want to use data or find value from it. I think that's a very common thing. Like some people, they just find that, you know, they want to build things that are permanent, right? Like, yes, the research is fun. Um, and there was someone that did all the research, but that's kind of where their project ends. They don't get to code things. They don't get to actually make things permanent. So I actually got to take those models, you know, reconfigure them so they were more performant and actually output it the way we wanted and make them a permanent fixture to our solution. And that was something that I think first started to kick off the fact that I was like, maybe I prefer data engineering. And there's a lot of other little things, right? Like it's this desire to make things permanent and make things more of a product. Uh, it was this desire to not just be stuck in this forever research loop where you're constantly like, hey, what's this next question? What's this next question? What's this next question? And rarely get to really deliver anything um, that kind of pushed me more and more towards this data engineering world. I think another facet of it um, was the fact that just data engineering tended to be a larger problem set. And I think this is why some or maybe many uh, data scientists end up becoming data engineers, whether they want to or not. Um, 
they just end up having to do data engineering work rather than data science work, right? Um, instead of getting to do um, some research, you have to create your data sets um, in such a way that they can be clean and reliable. So thus you have to create data pipelines that are reliable and basically you just become a data engineer. And this has been a problem, you know, ever since at least 2012, maybe before, um, since the days of Hadoop and when that was really popular, a lot of data scientists were expected to write MapReduce jobs. Uh, and now, even now I'm seeing data scientists have to do airflow work um, just to create their clean data sets. So there is something also there where a lot of the work that just gets done in the data world is around the data infrastructure and actual data pipelines just to get us to the point that we can rely on that data. And I think that's another reason that many people have kind of been pushed this way, one way or the other. They may or may not like it. Some people um, glean towards it. Some people are very happy in this space. Um, they like the fact that they don't always have to present to the board because they just get to create the tables and then someone else gets to create the actual work. But it's, it's an interesting kind of flow. And I'm honestly continuing to see it today, again, near a decade later, that people are still experiencing these same issues in data science that they just end up becoming data engineers over a slow period of time, whether they want to or not. Um, I became it because I like the work, but I really do think there's a lot of work that needs to be done um, in company culture, uh, as well as just clarifying roles, just so that we can make sure that people do the work that they like. And I know there's plenty of people who think that, you know, you should be able to do both and all and everything, and I get it, but especially if you can afford to have two, two teams that do this kind of work, it's nice to let people focus on what they're good at. So that's why I ended up leaving data science for data engineering. You know, I just tended to like the work that was a little more permanent, a little more focused on delivering a product, even if it's just a table and making that permanence uh, an actual thing and not getting stuck in these research cycles over and over again. And to some degree, it was just a necessity of the data world. With that, I'd love to hear your thoughts in terms of like why you became a data engineer or maybe why you're looking at data science and thinking that might be your career path. Whichever it might be, please leave your comments below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks and goodbye.